Defensively, it'll be Johnson at first, Green at second, Caballeros at short, Bando at third, Rudy out of left, Jackson in center, Alou at right, Gene Tennis behind the plate, Ken Holtzman the pitcher, Garrett is stepping in, and stepping up for the seventh game of the World Series is Ralph Connor. Thank you very much, Jim Simpson, and Wayne Garrett in the batter's box. Wayne batting 200 for the World Series with five hits and 25 times up. He's had two home runs, the only player to have two in the World Series. And here's the first pitch. It's a ball strike. Ken Oltman, 21 and 13 in the regular season. 16 complete games. He had four shutouts, pitched 297 innings, gave up 275 base hits, walked 66, 157. Here's a pitch back to the plate. It's a curveball outside and low on the... Now the wind up, the fist to Garrett, swung on, a fastball, foul back on the play. One ball, two strikes. Garrett was 16 home runs in the regular season, batted 256, he had 58 runs batted in. Left hand batter, leading off here for the New York Mets. The seventh game is underway, pitched back by Holtzman, a curveball, a strike three call. This is Holtzman's third ball game, his third start, and that was his third strikeout in the World Series. That brings up Felix Mion, who batted 290 in the overall season with three home runs, 37 runs batted in. Mion batting 179 for the World Series, five hits and 28 times up. Mion, a right-hand batter, chokes up in the bat about 12 and he takes the ball. As you can tell, this crowd here is... Very loud, very enthusiastic. A plus factor for the Oakland A's. Altman, with a lifetime record of 114 wins, comes back and a fastball is grounded foul over toward the A's dugout. Strike two count. Lifetime against the Mets. Altman, while pitching for the Chicago Cubs, won four and lost nine. Not counting his 1 1 record here in the World Series against the Mets. Two strike count, the sign goes out. Gene Jennings, the catcher, and the pitch to Mion's hit foul down the third base side. Wall off of Mion's foot, and the count holds a strike two. No team has won back to back World Series since the Yankees did it in 1961 and 62. He's trying to accomplish that feat here today. Leon back in the batter's box, stands very close to the plate, leans over the plate. Holtzman into the windup, and again the two-strike pitch, a ground ball hit off the short fielder by Capital as the quarter pitch the out. Two men away, and Rusty Staub coming up. Staub, the leading hitter in the World Series. He has nine base hits and 22 times up, batting 409. He has given in five runs in the series, and three of them off Ken Holtzman with a three-run home run at Chase hitting. Staub, a left-hand batter, hit 279 in the overall season with 15 home runs and 76 runs batted in. And Holtzman into the windup, and here's his first pitch to Tom. It's popped up into the left center field. Moving over is Reggie Jackson. He makes the call, and the call to the side is out in order. And a start, five starts. He's given up only one earned run and 40 innings of pitches. That is quite some record. He has won and won here in this World Series, and yet in all of the innings that he has pitched 14, he has not given up an earned run in the World Series. John Miller, the first baseman, Felix Beyond at second. Bud Harrelson having a great series as his Captain Harris of Oakland at shortstop. Wayne Garrett, the third baseman. Leon Jones out in left. Don Horn in center. Rusty Starr in right. Gary Gordy behind the plate. He's just thrown the ball down to Beyond. Don Matlock gets a last one or two from Don Miller, the first baseman, who drops over to the mound. Now goes back. Captain Harris steps in, and here again is Ralph. Thank you, Jim, and John Matlack, who was hit by a line drive back on May the 8th and suffered a fractured skull, gets set to go. He was out 11 days, came back, and since then has pitched marvelous baseball for the New York Mets. Kurt Campanaris, the batter, hitting 222 for the series, six hits and 27 times up. Mets have their first baseman and third baseman in, and the first pitch of fastball, and it's swung on the Mets, strike one. 
Class 62 hit shutout against the Cincinnati Reds in the championship series. Now the left-hander back again, and the pitch is Chen. It's in for a call strike. A curve ball at the knees. Campanaris did not like the call by Marty Springstead. In the regular season, Campanaris batted 250 with four home runs and 46 runs batted in. Had 34 stolen bases and 44 tries. Now Campanaris back in the batter's box after his discussion with the home plate umpire. He strike out, Matt back into the windup. Here's the pitch. It is rounded foul out by the third base coach, Irv Norn, and the count holds at strike two. Matt Black with three shutouts in the regular season, and 14 complete games, worked 242 innings, gave up 210 hits, walked 99, struck out 205. And again, the two strike pitch, a breaking ball, but it's high and away. One and two. Jerry Dare, the first base coach for the Oakland A's, along with Irv Norm, the third base coach. And Matt into the windup, and the one two delivery. It is hit down towards third base. Garrett has it to throw the first base in time, and Captain Harris is up. That'll bring up Joe Rudy. Rudy batting 292 has been a fielding sensation for Oakland in this World Series. He has given them three runs with seven base hits and 24 times up. No score. One away, bottom half of the first. Rudy, a right hand batter, hit 270 in the regular season with 12 home runs and 66 runs batted in. And Matt Black into the windup. His first pitch to Rudy is down low. It's ball one. Matt Black working on three days rest. In the course of the regular season, the Met pitcher is normally working every fifth day on four days rest. Matt Black worked eight innings at Shea Stadium in the game won by the Met six to one back on Wednesday evening. Ball that was thrown back to Matt like by Grody got away, so a little bit of delay as it comes back to the mound. The 1 0 pitch, and it's a breaking ball high. Two balls, no strike. Rudy being played by the shortstop, Bud Harrelson, in the hall at short, a wide area through the middle, wide open. Matt back reading the signs from Grody now goes. Into the short windup, and his next delivery to the plate is outside. On that batter, Sal Vandal. Three balls, no strike. Lifetime, that lack has won 29, lost 29, was lucky of the year. Last year, when he won 15, he lost 10. And the 3-0 delivery. It's closed. Now the A's have the first base runner of the ball game as Rooney walks on four pitches and brings up Kyle Bando. That is the fifth walk in three starts for Matt back in this world series. Bando with six hits and 22 times up, batting 273 in the series, batted 288 in the regular season. 29 home runs, 97 runs batted in. And Madlock from the set position. First pitch to Bando. That's ball outside. That's five in a row out of the strike zone, and that gets Rudy's attention. The catcher walks out to the mound. Gary Grody talking to his pitcher, John Madlock. It's 3.30 down each line here in the Oakland Coliseum, 375 in the alley. Breeze boiled on a sunshiny day. Now Grody back behind home plate. The signs go out. Matt like again to the set position. And the pitch. It is in over the inside corner. It falls strike one and one. And he's got their two and earned runs. Off Matt Lack in the first game of this series that started with a walk to Dick Green. 
One ball, one strike. And the next pitch. It is inside and low. Two and one. After the walk to Dick Green, Green was at on a ball and got away from Grody when he tried to go down to second base. A fine throw by Grody. Going out at second. Here's the pitch back. It's swung on and foul. Back out of play. Two and two. Then Ken Holtzman with two and out. Doubled on the left field line. His first hit all season long. His only, he was only up two times all year with the designated hitter rule in the American League. An error by Felix Mion allowing a run to score. And then when Campanera saved from the error was pitch off, he got to second base with a stolen base on a late throw. And then a single by Rudy. There's a ground ball foul for the second one. And Matlack was the losing pitcher in that first ball game. Two and two is the count. Mando back to get another bat as he broke his bat on the foul ball. Mets playing Bando deep and straight away. Rudy, the runner at first base, had no stolen bases in the regular season, no attempt. As a short lead, I'd like now again to the set position and the 2-2 pitch. It is fouled down the right field side back into the stands out of play. The Oakland Coliseum had a lot of foul area. Stands curving away to the dark, away from first base and third base. So the foul area, about as large as any park in Major League Baseball, maybe larger. Throw to first base and Rudy's chase back. Two balls, two strikes. And Matlack sets up. And his next pitch. It is fouled off. The count holds at two balls and two strikes. Only the first game of this World Series where there has not been a sellout crowd. First game, 46,021 attending here at Open Coliseum. Fantasy crowd is 49,333. Again, Matlack reads the signs from Jerry Gordy. Again, he sets up, and here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and missed, and Matlack gets his first strikeout as he throws the fastball by Sal Bando. Two men away, it brings up Reggie Jackson. Jackson has had eight base hits and 25 times up, batting 320. Rolled in two runs in yesterday's ball game towards the other. Jackson has had five base hits off the Mets relief pitcher, Chuck McGraw. Jackson in the regular season batted 293 with 32 home runs, 117 runs batted in. And Matlack with his first pitch, a check swing, ground ball out towards third base. Fielded by Garrett, he quickly throws over to first base with the out that retires the side. No run, no hit, no walk, and one man left. And the score at the end of one, the Mets nothing, open nothing. Scoreless here after one in game seven of the world for the deciding game. Ken Holtzman, who dispatched Garrett, Meon, and Staub in short order in the top of the first. Now will face Jones, Milner, and Grody as we begin the second. And here's Ralph. Leon Jones batting 320 for the series with eight base hits, 25 times up. He's driven in one run. That was on a home run. Jones in the regular season batted 260 with 11 home runs and 48 runs batted in. Holtzman in pitching the three batters in the first inning struck out one. Striking out Wayne Garrett, getting Felix Me on the ground to short and Rusty Cobb to fly to center field. First pitch to Cleon Jones. It's hit the deep center field. Moving back is Reggie Jackson. He's back to the warning track, and he turns. He gets under the ball and makes the catch. Deep fly ball to straightaway center field. On the out. One pitch, one away. It brings up John Milner. 
Miller having a good series in his second year in professional baseball, batting 333 for the series. Eight base hits and 24 times up. Left hand batter played as a full hitter by the Oakland team, and Milner squares around in bunny position, takes a pitch inside the ball. Milner decoying the bunny, led the club in home runs with 23 and had 72 runs batted in while hitting 239 for the year. Pitch back to Milner, he takes a fastball and it's inside. Two balls, no strikes. Ken Holtzman, 21 and 13 in the regular season, and the left-hander with his next pitch. It is hit in the air to shallow right field. Going back is Dick Green, the second baseman. He's making the call and has a little bit of trouble with the ball from the last minute, but makes the catch. Five in a row for Ken Holtzman that brings up the catcher, Jerry Grody. Grody hitting 269 for the series, seven base hits, 26 times up. Oh, it's a ball game. Two men out. We're in the top of the second. Mets have yet to have a base runner. As Holtzman has retired five in a row, and Brody steps into the batter's box. Brody, a right-hand batter. The pitch to the plate is fouled off. Back into the stands on the first base side, strike one. <laughs> Last year, Ken Holtzman won 19 and lost 11 for open. And the one strike delivery. It is inside, one and one. A's pitchers have a combined earned run average against the Mets at 2.53. The Mets have had a combined ERA of 1.74 against Oakland. Here's a pitch back for a ball. Two and one, the cap. Brody missing 60 days of the regular season when he was hit by a pitch ball and had his wrist broken. And the 2-1 delivery. Line to center field. Coming up is Reggie Jackson. And he tries to twist it, makes a diving catch. The fine play by Reggie Jackson never ties the tie. Another 1-2-3 inning on the sensational catch by Jackson and the score. At the end of one and a half innings, the Mets nothing, Oakland nothing. Man. Nobody likes to look at underarm clothing stains, but they're a real problem. You use an antiperspirant and you still get stains, stains that won't wash out. Well, start using the first anti-stain antiperspirant by White Guard. White Guard, cut it off. It's so effective that it helps stop wetness and stains. Try it and see for yourself. White Guard, cut it off, antiperspirant. It's the first anti-stain antiperspirant by White Guard. The second inning will have Tennis, Salu, and Johnson. Aaron Johnson for the second day in a row. He's going to hit it throughout most of the season for the Oakland A's, but for the second day in a row, he's in the lineup. Starting at first base as Dick Williams looks for a little bit more punch. We are scoring. We go to the last of the second. And the World Series hero of a year ago, Dean Tennis, steps in. There's Rob. Okay, Jim, and Dean Tennis in this series. Has had three hits and 18 times up, batting 167. Right hand batter. And on the mound, it's John Medlaff. His first pitch. It is in for a cold strike. On that catch by Reggie Jackson that ended the inning, Jackson misjudged the ball at the beginning and then came in to make the sensational diving catch. Next pitch back to the plate is low. It's one ball and one strike. Jerry Grody robbed of a base hit, was robbed in the first game of this series. It's now open win by a score of 2-1. to one. Jackson making a great catch to save the ball game. That came in the fourth inning. Here's the pitch back. It's called a strike. One and two. And it's in the regular season. Batted two eight with 24 home runs and 84 runs batted in. He's had two runs batted in in this series. Madlock looking for the signs. Now has them. Goes into the windup. The one-two delivery. It is just inside, two and two. Matt Mack normally pitches with a pretty fast cadence right here in this game. He's slowed down some. 
Pressure of the seventh game of the World Series. The pitch back to the plate. It is low, just low. It's ball three. Ball count to Gene Kennedy. He says to Lou, the on deck batter. And here's the 3 2 pitch. It is over. Strike three call. Matt Mack gets his second strikeout. Came back with a breaking ball. It was over the outside corner. His second strikeout away in the bottom of the second. No score. And the batter coming up is Asus Salou. Asus Salou playing in right field in last year's World Series. In the seventh game, it was Matty Alou who was playing right through the field. Oakland has had all three Alou brothers playing on their team at one time or the other. Felipe, Matty, and now Jesus. Alou has had three hits and 18 times up. He swings and misses the first pitch. One time in the polo grounds against the New York Mets. It was a Alou, Matty Alou, and Felipe Alou who batted in order and will retire at one, two, three. The only time in the history of baseball that three brothers batted in order in a professional baseball game in the major league. One strike count. Alou, a very loose bat hitter. Now swings and coming over is John Milner in foul territory. He has a play and he makes it. Two men away, it brings up the first baseman, Darren Johnson. Darren has had three hits and seven times at bat in the World Series, hitting 424. Two of the hits is a pinch hitter. In the overall season, he batted 246 for Oakland with 19 home runs and 81 runs batted in. Darren started the year with the Philadelphia Phillies. Here's the first pitch by Matlack. It's in for a call strike. Johnson was the A's top designated hitter. Got off the sensational start and then injured the thumb on his hitting hand and slowed down somewhat after that. Six back has called the ball. It's one ball and one strike. No score. Two men up. We're in the bottom of the second. Now the left-hander with his 1-1 delivery. It's rounded out toward third. Garrett charges it, has a tough play, and makes it. Goes over to first base. Wayne Garrett coming in for the choppers. Took it on the half hop on the second hop, and then made the play, and then threw over to first base for a 1-2-3 inning for John Matlack. And the score, at the end of two, the Mets nothing, the A's nothing. A 30 seconds for station identification. Don Hahn in the batter's box as we go to the top of the third. The first pitch by Ken Holtzman is high and outside the fastball, missing ball one. Rob Garner here from Oakland with Jim Simpson and the seventh game of the World Series. Peter side has had a base hit, and Holtzman back to Hahn, and the pitch is a little bit low. It's ball two. Hahn has had four hits and 25 times up in the series, batting 160 in the regular season. He batted 229 with two home runs and 21 runs batted in. Holtzman back with a strike. A fastball over the outside corner about better high. Two and one the count. It'll be Don Hahn, Bud Harrelson, and John Matlack as the first three batters for the Mets. Holtzman has retired his first six. And the left-hander back and the fastball is fouled off on the right side on a play of two and two. Holtzman has struck out one. He struck out Wayne Garrett in the first. And he has walked none. On taking time as he goes back to the on deck circle. Now on back up to the home plate area. It is a bright day here in Oakland and a tough left field. Tough sun field right now. As the sun moves over later on in the afternoon, the sun field moves to left center and then center field. 2-2 pitch. It's inside, and Hahn has to jump back. Full count is 3-2. and Hahn out of the batter's box. Now gets back in. Holtzman into the lineup, and the 3-2 pitch. Line to left field. It'll be a base hit. The first base hit of the ball game. Hahn to first base and holding there as Rudy gets the ball back in. Now the Mets have had a base runner. 
first in the ball game as Harm leads off from the third. In the second inning, two balls were hit hard off Ken Holtzman. A deep fly by Cleon Jones, caught by Reggie Jackson. A line drive by Jerry Grody that was caught by Reggie Jackson. Now Hahn is let off with a line drive to the left that brings up Bud Harrelson. Harrelson batting 300 for the series and six base hits him 20 times up. Butter switches and will be batting for the right hand side against the left hander. Third baseman Sal Bando is in. Guard against the possible bunch. The first pitch is swung on and missed strike one. Olsen coming to the plate with a fastball. Harrelson in the regular season batted 258 with no home runs and 20 runs batted in. As Jim Simpson pointed out, Harrelson has turned in a great job at shortstop, as has Bert Campanera. Six back to the plate, run on and miss. Strike two. Again the fastball. Holtzman had a 2.97 earned run average in the regular season, winning 21 and losing 13. His first 20 game year as a pitcher. Now the left-hander sets up, and the two-strike pitch, a fastball, high and away, and a good play on the part of the catcher, Gene Tennis, almost a wild pitch. Time goal as Marty Springstead rushes off the plate. He was shook up by a foul tip in the second inning. One and two, the count on Bud Harrelson, and again Holtzman back to the plate. And a fastball high and away, it's two and two. Mets are not a running team. They had only 27 stolen bases in the regular season out of 45 attempts. Two balls, two strikes. On the short lead at first base. And the pitch back is outside, ball three. So after having Harrelson has worked the count full. On deck batter, John Matlack. Mets for the runner at first base, no one out as they bat in the top of the third. No score in the game. Time is out, and now Holtzman back to the plate. Harrelson lines it foul down into the left field stand. So the count remains at three balls and two strikes. Nine hundred twelve thousand three hundred ninety. Capacity crowd here, and there's a fly ball to left field. Under the ball is the left fielder Rudy. He had a lot of trouble with the sun, but he made the catch. Rudy moving into several different positions, trying to get the sun away from the ball, and he made the play. So one away, on back to first base, and the batter is John Matlock. In the regular season, Yogi Bear sacrificed the majority of the time with one out, a runner at first base, and the pitcher up. Matlack has had one base hit and three times up in the series. A. Salvano looking for a possible sacrifice about 80 feet away at the third base position. Darren Johnson holding against the runner at first. Matlack, a left hand batter. And he squares around and bunts the ball out toward first base with foul. One strike count on John Matlack. Ball was bunted out to the first base side, and as it was just moving into foul territory, Gene Tennis, the catcher, battered at it and knocked it away. Matlack back in the batter's box as Tennis gives out the sign. Again, Bando in from that. Post position at third. Here's the pitch. Matlack sits under it. The ball gets away from tennis. Rolls about six feet in back of him. He quickly gets pulled and picks it up. And Hahn holds at first base. Pitch was right at John Matlack. He had to duck under the pitch. One ball, one strike. Field condition is excellent here at Oakland. By the fact they have had some rain. Now the pitch again to the plate. Matlack bumps it out to third. Bando has it. A play at second base is in time. A relay to first base it was in time for the double play. And the A's turn the A's double play of the World Series in the side is retired. No runs, one hit. And no one else. And the score at the end of two 
to have any. The match nothing, the A's nothing. Huggy down at Tully. He was involved in quite a dispute with the New York Mets earlier in the World Series. The man who made that call at first base from Yogi Bell and stuff, saying it wasn't so. But it was so. Now we go to the last of the time of a short of game. In the National Football League today, all finals. Baltimore 27, Detroit, or rather Baltimore 29, Detroit 27, Miami 27, Buffalo 6, Cleveland 42, Houston 13, Washington 31, St. Louis 13, Pittsburgh 26, New York Jets 14, New England 13, the Chicago Bears 10, Minnesota 28 to 21 over Philadelphia. All of those are finals. Now back to baseball. The seventh game of the World Series, the last of the third. Dick Green going it off. Here again as well. All right, Jim. Dick Green has had one base hit in 12 times up in the series, batting 083, batted 260 in the regular season, and turned mad last night. He has walked one. They said. And the first pitch by the left hander to Green, a right hand batter, is a fastball. It's swung on and fouled back into the stand. Strike one. Green had three home runs in the regular season, drove in 42. He'll be followed by Ken Holtzman and then Captain Campanera. Strike pitch. Green takes a curveball over a call strike. That back became only the second pitcher in New York Met history to strike out. 200 or more batters when he struck out 205 in the regular season. Tom Seaver was the other Met that struck out 200 or more. He's done that several times. Two strike pitch and Green takes the fastball. It's inside one and two. One ball, two strikes. And that back. Back to the plate, and the pitch is swung on and fouled off. Now remaining at one ball and two strikes. John Matlack, one time attended the University of Pittsburgh. One from outside of Philadelphia, Westchester. Big left hander looking in for the sign now has it. And here's the one two pitch again. A curveball over strike three call. Matt Lack gets his third strikeout. I'm going to bring up Ken Holtzman. Holtzman has been up once and he has had one base hit. That was a double down the left field line. It was only his second appearance in the overall season at the plate. His other time up, he had walked. So he's batting 1,000 for the year. Right hand batter. And the first pitch by Matlack. Swung on a miss, strike one. In this World Series, the designated hitter is not allowed, so the Oakland pitchers batting actually for the first time of the year, with the exception of a few that got in one or two licks in the regular season after the age of French dependent. And at one strike, the pitch back to the plate. Over for a call, strike two. At back. Had an earned run average of 3.20 for the season. Next pitch, grounded hard down the left field line, foul. And Holtzman coming close to... Another base hit, as he, base hit as he bounces that ball just fouled down the third base side. Wayne Garrett, the third baseman for the Mets. Bud Harrelson at shortstop. Felix Mion, second. John Milner at first. Leon Jones in left. Don Hahn in center. Rusty Staub in right. Next pitch is line down the left field line. Another base hit. It will be extra bases. Olsen going into second base with his and a double. So Ken Holtzman, batting for only the third time in the overall season, has his second base hit in this World Series, and he has the first base hit by the Oakland A's. Now a runner at second base in scoring position, and... Anthony Campanaro is coming up.
Time called in the outfield area were a couple of the ground crew pick up some streamers that had been thrown out onto the field. Campanaro has rounded out the third in his one appearance. He's had six hits and 28 times up. That is 250 for this season. Four home runs, 46 runs by the home. Kevin Harris, the right hand batter. Milner, the first baseman, about 85 feet away to guard against the possible bunt. Wayne Garrett, even with the bag at third. Here's the pitch. Is it hit the deep right field going back to Scott the warning track? It is gone. Goodbye. A home run by Kathy Garrett. Second out of the The first home run by Oakland in this series, and that's have had four. That lack in 16 innings had not given up an earned run, and now Oakland leading on a two run home run by Campaneros. He had four all season long, and the batter coming up is Joe Rooney. Rudy walked on four pitches his first time up, and Matlack with a curveball gets a swinging strike. The A's have gone eight games without a home run. Last two playoff games and the first six of this World Series. And their last home run was by a Campy Campaneros. In the third game of the championship series, it came in the 11th inning. Now pitch back to the plate, a ball, it's one and one. A's without a base hit. Quickly getting on the scoreboard with a double by Ken Holtzman, their first base hit, followed by the home run by Bert Campanera. Now Matt Black into the windup and is swung on and missed. Again, the curve. It's one ball and two strikes. Rudy has an average of 292 for the World Series with seven base hits and 24 times up. And the one two pitch is hit hard to left center. Another base hit. Might be two going over time to cut it off. Rudy making the turn to first base. Holds there as Hahn gets the ball back into the infield. A double, a home run, and a hard single. All coming with one out here in the bottom half of the third, and here comes Rube Walker, the pitching coach of the New York Mets. He's going out to the mound. In the bullpen, action for the New York Mets. Right-hander Harry Parker is starting the throw. Walker out to the mound to talk with John Medlack. Also there, John Miller, the first baseman, and Jerry Grody, the catcher. And this ground here in Oakland, a capacity crowd coming alive. Actually, they were alive when the minute, from the minute they came into the stadium. Back to the bench. Time is back in. The batter is Sal Bando. He was struck out his first time up. Bando with six hits and 23 times up in the series. The right hand batter. And Matlack with his first delivery. It's popped up out toward the first base side. John Milner is right there to field it, and he makes the play. Two men away. Rudy holding his first base, and the batter coming up is Reggie Jackson, the center fielder. Thank you. 
Battled out the third of time up on a check swing. He's had eight hits and 26 times up on the series. He's driven in four. Led the American League in home runs with 32, and runs better in with 117. And the left-hand batter taking his time before getting seven about his box. Rudy not being held on at first base. Milner playing about two steps off the bag. Now he moves further back. Here's the pitch to Sonny Jackson. A breaking ball rolling outside a ball. Reggie Jackson. That is 293. 293 in the regular season. Now Matt Black's next pitch. A breaking ball over at the knees. A call strike. It's one and one. Miller now has moved in to her at first base. And it's the next pitch. Deep to right field. It is going. Boy, it is gone. Good bounce. Two left home run by Reggie Jackson. Gene Tennis, the catcher. And Yogi Bear go down, and that should be all for John Matlack. In the bullpen, right-hander Harry Parker is going. They are going to the mound. Matlack looking out towards center field. He is not aware of Yogi's presence. Now Yogi gets to him, taps him on the back. Matlack turns around, talks to his man, manager, and here comes Harry Parker into the ball game. So John Matlack, who had not given up an earned run and working 16 innings in this World Series, is out of the ball game. In this inning, all the base hits that have been given up by Matlack, a total of four and four runs. Matlack leaving the ball game, struck out two, he walked one. It's credit for two and two thirds innings. And now, uh, Harry Parker into the game. Parker will be making his third appearance in the World Series. He was tagged with a loss at Shea Stadium. He pitched two innings. But his total average is absolutely zero. Gene Teller standing on deck. Well, the Oakland A's had not been getting the long ball, of which they're capable, and the Mets pitching staff had not only kept in on the home run, but done an excellent job against the Cincinnati Reds in the championships before this. John Matlock, who had gone those 40 innings, and before this outbreak, 42 innings over his last five starts, with only one unearned run, it finally got to us. For the second time in the series, he's going with just three days rest, as Ralph Connor pointed out, instead of his normal four. And yesterday, after the ball game was over, when the New York Mets realized that there would be a seventh game, that they had not won the World Series in six games, Matt Mike said he was a little down. He did not expect to pitch today. He said, but I'm not going to hang around here and letting the reporters. I'm not going to let it hang around here and let you tell me how important tomorrow's game is. I'm going to go out and eat, I'm going to get a good night's sleep, and I'll pitch tomorrow as tired as I am. Well, he struggled in the first inning, did very well in the second inning, and after striking out Green, looking at a curveball, things fell in, and four runs are in, it's four to nothing open, and the third is not yet open. Parker's in, and here's Ralph. Okay, Jim, Dean Dennis. Will be leading off in the first pitch is called the ball. Dennis was struck out, looking at a 3-2 pitch his first time up. That was against John Matlack in the second. 
Dennis has been up 19 times. He's had three hits in the series. A pitch back by Parker over the inside corner, one and one. Rally started by Ken Holtzman as he doubled down the left field line, followed by a two-run home run by Campanar, a single by Rudy, a two-run home run by Reggie Jackson. Now the next delivery is swung on and fouled back into the stands, one ball and two strikes. Parker started the season for the Mets as a starting pitcher and was 4-0 as a starter. Then he was pressed into relief when Chuck McGraw got off to a bad start in the early part of the year. Now here's the pitch back to the plate. A call strike is 1-2. and two. In every one of the seven games of this series, the home team has scored first. Two balls and two strikes. And the next delivery. It is checked on, and the pitch is low and outside with ball three. Home plate right umpire Marty Springsteck indicated that ball might have been a foul ball. It was a check swing. Ball uh, down in the dirt. Ball boys out three and two. Pitch back is ball four, and tennis marks. Second mark in the game for. Mets pitchers and it brings up a two salute who found out his first time up. Now Lou has been called back and left hand hitting Vic Cavalier on the got by the arm deck circle. That'll happen, Ralph. Davalil's coming on now. And of course, it's a game of the outfield since they're going to the right hander. Davalil over the ball game. I'm about to go to center. And Reggie Jackson will switch back to right. Big Dan Leo, a left hand batter. And one more note when Gene Kenneth threw that ball just now, that number 11 for the series round is tied with Babe Ruth in 1926, 11 walks in a seven game series. Avalio batted one good in the regular season with no home runs and four runs batted in. He's had one hit and eight times up in the World Series. Parker from the set position, checking the runner at first base. His first pitch to Davalio, third ball over a call strike. Frank Sadecki is now pitching in the bullpen for the Mets. Sadecki throwing in the bullpen. Parker again to the set position, the second first. And pitch back to Davalio, is swung on and foul back into the stands on the third base side of strike two. Speaking of Famous names in baseball history, Babe Ruth, of course. Dan Alito has a front leg raised somewhat similar to Mel Ott. Now it's strike two. A pitch by Parker. It is popped up into shallow center field. Coming up and time on. The glasses go down. He's under the ball. He makes the catch in the side retire. But in the inning, he is in the plate. They score four runs on four hits, no errors, a walk, one left, and the score at the end of three. Oakland four, the Mets nothing. Oakland, California. Jim Simpson with Rob Connor. Davalio has remained in the ball game and gone to center field. And Reggie Jackson switches to right field, but he got it on a standing ovation. And while you were away from the ballpark for a moment, Jackson spent many of his moments tipping his hat, waving his hand to the crowd. And the story is about Reggie with this year. At 32 home runs and 117 RBIs, he leads the league in both departments. He has finally gained one thing. He's not only a leader now, but he has supreme confidence. And he really teed off in that second home run. Well, it's the best part of fight back here's run. All right, Jim, in the first pitch to Wayne Garrett, a fastball high and inside ball run. The Mets going around for the second time. Garrett struck out his first time up. And Holtzman has pitched to nine batters. He has given up one base hit. The runner erased on a double play. Now the pitch back, and it's over a call strike. One and one. Garrett, Felix Mayon, and Rusty Stav, the first three batters for the Mets here in the fourth inning. Holtzman into the windup, and the one-one pitch. It is in there for a call strike two. Garrett started the swing, held up, and the pitch a call strike. One ball, two strikes. Holtzman has struck out one. He has walked none. Now the left-hander with his one-two pitch. He's swung on and grounded foul. So the count remains one ball and two strikes. 
Here it was the hottest batter for the Mets in September. When the Mets came on to come from last place, the 30th day of August, to win it. Now here in the seventh game of the World Series, Garrett has had five hits and 26 times up. There's a fly ball hit out to center field. Big Sam Alito with his first chance. He's under the ball, and he makes the catch. Four putouts in center field so far in this ball game, and the batter coming up is Felix Mion. Mion rounded out the short this first time up. He's had five hits and 29 times up. Avalio playing for Cleveland back in 1964 won a golden glove. First pitch to me on a flight down the right field line. Jackson in foul territory. Over to Memphis. In foul territory. And he runs into the wall. Not hurt. Two men away. So the Oakland A's playing inspired baseball in this final. Another good play by Reggie Jackson and the batter coming up for the Mets, Rusty Staub. He flied out to center field his first time up. Rusty with nine hits and 23 times up. And the pitch back is inside. It's ball one. Staub has driven in five runs in this World Series. Next pitch is lined out towards short. Good fly. Kathy Campanaris in the center field and stopped now with his 10th base hit. A leading hitter in the series. He's on it for his base. Two men away and Cleon Jones coming up. Jones right out to deep center field his first time up. Mets now have had their second base hit. The A's have had four. The A's lead four to nothing. Jones has had one run batted in. Had a home run to right field in the right field. And Holtzman with his first delivery to Cleon Jones, a curveball, low on this ball one. Now Holtzman quickly sets up. It's pitched back to the plate, a fastball. It's inside, two balls, no strike. In the regular season, the A's had 147 home runs as a team. The Mets had 85. And the 2-0 pitch. Leon swings and fouls the ball. It's two balls and one strike. Jones had 11 home runs in the regular season. He has six home runs in the last ten games of the season for the Mets. Now he picks back to Jones, a fastball, a tie-in outside, and the count three balls and one. The on-deck batter is John Miller, the Mets' leading home run hitter in the season. Mets trying to get back into this ball game. The A's leading four to nothing. Here's the three-one pitch. It is over the outside corner. A call. Strike two. Jones did not like the call. So with a full count, Darren Johnson, the first baseman, moving back behind the base runner. Stab will be running with the pitch. Two men away. Holzman sets up. Stab goes, and the pitch to Jones is inside. It's ball four. So the Mets now have runners at first and second base for the first time in the ball game. And they have John Milner, their leading home run hitter, coming up. He had 23 home runs. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. Audio Warehouse sells only stereo equipment. At Audio Warehouse, we buy in quantity, keep prices low. A sound example? This week at Audio Warehouse, you get a complete stereo system with a BSR 610X turntable, Sherwood 7100 receiver, and two EPI 100 speakers, regularly 549, now only 439. Audio Warehouse, specialized in good sound, sound advice, and low prices. If you think all stereo dealers are the same, and if you're thinking of buying a stereo system, think again. Think of us, Audio Warehouse. Ralph 
China along with Jim Simpson from Oakland, California. The A's leading four to nothing. After a conference at the mound, it is Ken Holtman pitching to John Miller. The first pitch is high. A fastball missing ball one. In the bullpen, left-hander Darrell Knowles throwing for Oakland. And right-hander Raleigh Finger. And Holtman with his 1-0 pitch. Miller hits it hard foul down the first baseline. A bouncing ball fielded by the first baseman Darren Johnson. Oh, the count at one ball and one strike as the runners move back. Stop back to second base and Jones back to first. The runner in scoring position for the first time in the ballgame. Holtzman giving up his first walk after Staub had singled to put Staub at second base. Here's the pitch. It's outside. Two balls and one strike. No pitcher has had a complete game in this World Series. Two balls, one strike. Holtzman sets up the pitch back to Milner. It is hit hard towards second base and fielded there by Dick Green. Good play. And he throws the first base for the out to retire the time. No runs, one hit. No errors, a walk, two men left in the score at the end of three and a half innings. Open for the next nothing. It's this ball game, four to nothing. If you go to the fourth, one of the underlying conversations you had right from game one has been who's going to be the most viable player? A long while we talk about Harrelson and Kevin Harris, then Tug McGraw. But Reggie Jackson, who saved the ball game with a great catch in the first, is hitting heroics in the second game, went for naught because Oakland lost that 10 to 7. Won yesterday's game, driving in two runs, scoring the third himself, and his two run shot today has put Reggie Jackson in the running for the most valuable player. But he's got a long way to go. Fourth inning round. All right, Jim, and the first pitch by Harry Parker to Darren Johnson's in for a call strike. If the Mets would win this final game of the World Series, Rusty Staub would have to be considered. He's had 10 base hits in the overall series. Next pitch is swung on a miss, and the count now is strike two against Darren Johnson. Johnson grounded out the third his first time up. He's had three hits and eight times up in the series. And now Harry Parker, in relief, the starting pitcher John Matlack comes back with a fastball. It's inside, it's one and two. Matlack working two and two thirds innings, charged with four runs on four hits. He struck out two, he walked one. Parker got the final out in the third inning after the A's took the lead four to nothing. Here's a curveball over a strike call, and Johnson has struck out. I'll bring up Dick Green. He was struck out his first time up. Checking the record on John Matlock, he struck out three in his two and two thirds inning. Sort of a strikeout by Parker, the fourth by Met pitchers in this game. Dick Green is in for a call strike. Green was one hitting 13 times up. Right hand batter. And the right hand pitcher back to the plate, and the pitch is over. Strike two call. Ray Parker was acquired by the Mets from the St. Louis Cardinals. Two-strike delivery. Hit out toward right field in foul territory and beyond the reach of John Miller as he moves back trying to make the play. So the count stays at strike two and on the swing and the foul ball, Green broke his back. So Green back to get another bat. That's a new ball. It's the play. Hundred and sixty two games in the season. Playoffs going to the final fifth game for both teams. And now the final seventh game of the World Series. A two strike pitch. It is popped up foul. Back into the stands out of play. So the count holds it strike two. It is indeed a long season, and here on October twenty first, the final game of the year. Green back in the batter's box. Parker taking the sign from Brody now goes into the lineup. And again, his two-strike pitch is topped out toward third base with foul. So, again, the count stays at strike two. First game went to Oakland by a score of two to one. The second game, the Mets 10 to seven in 12 innings. The third game, the A's 3 to two in 11 innings. The fourth game, the Mets 6 to one. 
This game's a match two to nothing, and then Oakland getting back even a three three, winning yesterday three to one. Again, the two strike pitch, and it's grounded out to a third. Fielded there by Wayne Garrett. The throw to first base is in time for the out. So Green is out, two men away. It brings up Ken Holtzman, who doubled his first time up. And Holtzman getting a big hand here. He's been up only three times all year. Walked one time and has doubled twice in this World Series. Holtzman, a right-hand batter, a left-hand pitcher, into the batter's box. Parker into the windup and the pitch. Last ball, it's low and it's ball one. Parker again back and the next pitch is swung on a miss. That time the curve ball. One ball, one strike. Postman is batting for the first time against the right hand pitcher. And at 1-1, Parker back, and the pitch is low and outside. Two balls, one strike. And Parker, with his 2-1 delivery, a hit in the air out to shallow left field. Going over in the foul territory is Bud Harrelson. He makes the call, and he makes a good running catch, and the side is retired in order by Harry Parker. And the score at the end of four innings of play. It's Oakland for the Mets Nephew. With Ralph Connor, this is Jim Setzer in Oakland, California for game number seven, which the A's lead four to nothing. Last year in seven games, the A's won the American League Championship in the World Series over Cincinnati. And the A's then were known for their handlebar mustaches and long hair. Harkening back to before the turn of the century. This year, they're known for their off-the-field squabbles, fights, arguments. Problems with management, problems with ownership, problems with the commissioner's office, or nothing. Last time the New York Mets were in a World Series, they had their miracle of 1969. A down four to nothing. The Mets are now looking for a miracle here in game number seven. One thing is obvious. Yogi Berra is going for runs with the pitcher off you up in this fifth inning. He's already got Sadecki up and warming again. Holtzman is pitching very well. He's allowed the two hits, struck out one, and walked one, only in trouble in the fourth when he gave up a single to Staub and then walked Leon Jones. But he got Mill on the ground for second base. It's four to nothing as he starts the New York fifth. Well, Jerry Goody to lead off. He was robbed of a base hit by Reggie Jackson, who was playing center field at the time, back in the second. Goody, a right hand batter. Seven hits and 27 times up in the first game of this World Series. He was robbed of a base hit by Jackson and a drive to left center. The first pitch is swung on and lined in the left field, and the Mets have a base runner. One pitch, Brody is on with a base hit, and the batter coming up, the center fielder, Don Hahn, who singled the left field in the third for the first hit for the Mets. Mets had three base hits in the ball game. The A's have had four, and the A's leading four to nothing on two two-run home runs, one by Campy Campanaris, the other by Reggie Jackson. In the bullpen, Darrell Knowles again throwing for the A's along with Raleigh Fingers, a left-hander and a right. On stepping into the batter's box in the first pitch. It is inside a ball. Hahn has had five hits and 26 times up in this series, his first. Young center, center fielder steps out of the batter's box, takes a couple of phantom swings, gets back in. One ball, no strike. Tony not being held on at first base by Darren Johnson. Johnson playing off the bag behind him, and the pitch to the plate is outside. It's ball two. Two balls, no strike. On checking with third base coach Eddie Yost to see whether or not he'll be hitting. Roy McMillan, the Mets coach at first. Now a two and takes it's over the outside corner, a call strike. Two and one. Darrell Knowles looking in at the action. Not throwing now for the Oakland A's in the bullpen. The pitch back to Hahn is swung on and missed. Two and two. Fastball by Holtzman, a swinging strike. For the A's, they're 174th. 
season game. Of course, they had about 30 exhibition games, so they're around 200 in total games played for the year. 2-2 two -two pitch, a slice foul. Into the stands on the first base side. Don Hahn was born in San Francisco. And the count at two and two as Hahn steps back into the batter's box. That's with a runner on. No one out. Trailing by four as they bat in the fifth inning. In the pitch. Swung on and missed. And Hahn is struck out. Postman second strike out of the game. will bring up Bud Harrelson. Bud is all for one. He flat out the left field his first time up. Harrelson with six hits and 21 times up. Switch hitter batting from the right hand side against the left hander Ken Olsen. Again, Johnson, the first baseman, playing behind the runner at first base. And the first pitch to Harrelson, bounce to the middle, going over Scampanaris by the bag. He feels it throws to Green at second base from the fourth play there, and Harrelson on the fourth play exchanges with Jody at first. Two men away, and a batter coming up. Was well, scheduled to be Harry Parker, but the Mets are going for a pinch hitter. Jim Beecham coming out of the dugout, swinging the bat. It's going to be right-hand hitting Jim Beecham. Beecham, the Mets' number one right-handed pinch hitter over the course of the season. But no hits and three times up in the World Series. A's leading four to nothing. With four runs in a very explosive third inning. It started when Holtzman doubled down the left field line, Campanaris homered to right center field, Rudy singled the left, and scored when Reggie Jackson homered to right center field. That's with the runner at first base, two men out, beats him in the batter's box. Sadecki still throwing in the bullpen for the Mets, he'll be their next pitcher. Well, Johnson holding against the runner, but Harrelson in the first pitch to Beecham is swung on a miss by Horn. He had 278 in the regular season, but no home run. Pitch back to the plate. Breaking ball to tie on outside. One ball and one strike. Holtzman checking the signs. Now checks the runner at first base. Comes back to the plate, and the pitch is taken high. A fastball, two and one. Holly Fingers throwing in the bullpen for the A's. Darrell Hall standing by. Holtzman to the set position, and the two-one pitch. Swung on and missed. Holtzman back with a fastball just above the knees, and the count now two and two. He's trying to become the first team to win back-to-back -back World Series victories since the Yankees did it back in 61 and 62. Two balls, two strikes. And the swung on and fouled back against the screen. The count holds. Casey Stengel, the manager of the Yankees, at that time is in the stand. Makes his home in Glendale, California. Came up to see the match in this World Series starting back on last Saturday. Went to New York with the Mets, watched the games there, and now back here in Oakland. Casey, the first manager the Mets ever had. Started back in 1962. There's a foul ball back into the stands, and the ball fielded there nicely by one of the fans. Count holds at two balls and two strikes. In that year, in 1962, the Mets set a record for losing games, 120. They won 40 and lost 120. After finishing ninth in 1968, the Mets won the championship World Series in 1969 for manager Joe Hodges. Here's the pitch. It's grounded foul off to the left side. Mets. 
The only expansion team to get into a World Series. Two balls, two strikes. Mets have also had West Westrom as their manager in their brief history. There's a third ball over for call, strike three. And Holtzman strikes out the two times. Jim Beecham that retires the side. The third strikeout. No runs, one hit. No errors. A man left at first in the score after four and a half innings. Oakland four, the Mets nothing. Mets with their back to the wall. Going to their third pitcher as Ray Sadecki comes into the ball game. The A's leading by a score of four to nothing. A's breaking loose for four runs in the third on two two-run home runs. One by Bert Campanaris, the other by Reggie Jackson. And now it's Campy Campanaris coming up. And here for the play-by-play, -play, Jim Simpson. A roll for Campanaris. He got a home run on the first pitch. He went the other way. And Hope went on base. And put the A's in front two to nothing. After that, Rudy hit a map like curveball up the middle for a single and with two out. Reggie Jackson drilled along the home run of the third. Well, up into the right field seats over the page 75 mark. Campanaris now to face Sadecki. A left-hander. First pitch is a strike. Sadecki, 32 years old, born and lives out in Kansas City. This is his fourth game of the series. He's only pitched two and a third innings, but the other night when Matt Lack won six to one, and his shoulder began to tighten up on him, Sadecki saved the game, pitching his score this night. That's ball one. One ball, one strike to Campanaris with Joe Rudy on deck. Two to nothing. Okay. Last of the fifth, seventh game of the series. Dark speed pitch lined over the head of Hal Jones. Joe's out of left field, left the ball, get away from it. Campanaris has a very last second, picked up by Hunter and settled the end, and Campanaris puts on the brakes at second base. Leon Jones had that right leg go out from under him, and now the trainer is going as he tried to stop. Jones is being bent over by Don Hall. Builder runs out from first base. Beyond the second baseman goes out. Rusty Star runs out from right field, and the trainer's on his way out. And Leon Jones is down in left field. It appears that he turned his ankle, and he is lying on the ground now holding that right ankle. Watching it on the instant replay, Jones fell back as he slipped after missing the ball and fell back on the right ankle, and he evidently had it pinned underneath him as he fell on top of it. So, Leon, still on the ground, as Tom McKinnon, the trainer of the New York Mets, checks him out, along with several of the Mets players. The old the first ball game sent Jackson deep to the warning track in the second, also as Walton has eight hits. And he was a strong man for the Mets down to the wire in the month of September. And when you're down four to nothing, the one thing you don't want to lose is your cleanup batter, Cleon Jones. And they're still working over him out of left field. That is a base hit for Campanaris, an error on Jones as he allowed the ball to get away from him. The Oakland A's trying to now go to work on Ray Sebecki, leading four to nothing. In 1965, it was the Dodgers who won the World Series. In 66, Baltimore winning its first blue them out in four straight. In 67, St. Louis took the miracle Boston Red Sox, also managed by Dick Williams, the manager in this World Series for Open. In 68, down as they were, Detroit came back with Mickey Lowen, the winner there. In 1969, the miracle New York Mets. In 1970, Baltimore had a rather easy time with Cincinnati. In 1971, Pittsburgh, led by the late Roberto Clemente, came back and in seven games took Baltimore. And in 1972, Oakland, of course, defeated Cincinnati. And now you know what it's trying to, what the Oakland A's are trying to do to become the first team since way back in 61 62 to win two in a row and to have the American League win two championships in a row. The story on Cleon Jones' route is he is still down, still getting worked on. Tom McKenna is still out there. Yogi Berry is bending over talking to him. And at this moment, with four and a half innings to play to go, or maybe less, because it is the age of these things do not look good for those amazing Mets. Well, the main thing for the Mets is to keep Jones in the lineup. He is now up and limping around. He has been bandaged, bandaged up by Tom McKenna, the trainer, and it appears he's going to be able to stay in the ballgame. 
Well, the Ogie Baron still walking with him, and so is Tom McKenna. So if they now begin to trot in, and Jordan stays out there. Let's pause, pause, 30 seconds for station identification. Leon Jones is staying in the ballgame. This is Ralph Conrad, along with Jim Simpson. The World Series, the seventh game, and once again, here's Jim. Joe Rudy walked on four pitches off start of the and then picked on a curveball and single the center of the third and scored ahead of Reggie Jackson's powerful long home run to right center field. Down at second base is Campanelli. George Stone now throwing left hander for the New York Mets. Kevin Harris leads off. The Becky throws. Line by Pacey up the middle. Kevin Harris on his way around third. Here comes Connor center field. No goes to second. It's five to nothing. That one cannot yet be labeled. And earned one might be before this inning is over. But with a five run lead, Ken Holtzman has to feel pretty good. He can roll up the bases, but Grand Slam can be hit against him, and it can still only be 5-4. to four. In other words, with a 5 run lead, the tying run can never come to bat. Here's Sal Vandal, 6-24 in the series, all for 2 this afternoon. In game 7, Sadecki throws curveball strike. Five runs on six hits, so errors. For open, no runs, three hits, and one error. That's my Caleb Jones in this inning that has led the Champions scoring from... Second base. Again, a drive to right field. Stop is there. Going back, one hands into the hit the warning track. Stop, I don't believe, thought that ball would carry that far. Went back to the warning track and hauled it in. There's one out. Rudy receives the first. And here comes Reggie Jackson. The last home run that Reggie had was on September the 24th against the Twins here in Oakland. In the 14 games from then until today, no home run. Reggie on the bench, having done little or nothing except defensively and offensively in the second game, when it didn't count because New York won at 10-7. Before yesterday's game, I got that gut feeling. It's enough time for me to do something. He doubled in two, scored the third himself on a 3-1 win. Today, his home run is driven in two. First pitch is a curveball strike to Jackson. And now Buzz Kepler, a right-hander, joins George Stone, the left-hander in the best full set. Five to nothing. He's trying to put the clamp on the amazing Mets and hope that no miracle happens here today. The Mets are still in the ball game. We're just in the fifth. Ball has popped up. Garrett at third base says he's got to play in foul territory. The third base coaching box in it. He takes it for the second out. Jackson fouls out to Garrett and gets the hand as he walks back. Gene Tennis called out looking at a curveball strike three in the second inning steps in. And then on a 3 2 pitch in the third, Tennis threw his 11th walk of the series. That's caught him with a 1926 favorite record of 11 in one series. He had 101 during the regular season. Rudy at first, two out, one run in. Tennis, four home runs last year, watched the curveball hit the outside corner for a strike. The Oakland A's have been some story in the American League this year and in the World Series. Another curveball, grounded foul, backhanded by Garrett and foul territory at third base. Of course, the New York Mets' amazing story came with a September rush, 12 and a half out at All-Star time, and then having to win it the day after the regular season was over, and then having to knock off Cincinnati, which they did in five games, and then to carry Oakland to seven games. But the A's... Well, they're a different story. They have a batting ball club off the field as well as on. Third ball popped up. Harrelson goes out. Hahn comes in. The out is back. Harrelson says, I've got it. Fights the win and holds it in. Towering top fly. So make that run unearned. One run on two hits. One costly error as it turned out and one left. We've gone through five innings. And the A's in the seventh game of the World Series lead the Mets five to nothing. The A's are leading this final series game by a score of five to nothing, and if the Mets lose it, they'll be looking back. And one of the innings that they can look back to, the eighth of yesterday's ball game, with one away, Ken Barswell singles the right field as a pinch hitter. 
Wayne Garrett then lined the ball up the alley in left center field, got a single, and put Boswell over at third. A good play on the ball by the left fielder, Joe Rudy, to hold it to a single. Right after that, Felix Mayon singled the right field. The Mets had a run in and a runner at third base and a runner at first. Rusty Staub, the batter, had a chance to put it away. He has been the hitting hero, and he was struck out on three pitches by Darrell Moe. That might have been the play that cost the Mets the chance to win the overall World Series in six games. Right now, it's Wayne Garrett coming up. Once again, here's Jim. The Mets have four more innings in which to catch up, and this is the first of those four. The top of the sixth, Garrett is 0 for 2 today, 5 for 27 of the series. Of course, there's two home runs. Left-hander to left-hander, and he wants the ball to the inside and roll the ball one. That's for the top of the batting order here. Mion is on deck, and as always, stop. But Mion comes out on deck, retreats, and he stands a couple steps behind him. Foul off the fifth, back toward us. One ball, one strike. Stop comes very close to being a second man on deck. He just can't wait to get out of the dugout and start swinging the bat. Captain Hunter had a great day yesterday. Holton's trying to duplicate that. There's a slow curve that's lined foul as Garrett got around in front of it. The three down in right field by Reggie Jackson, who throws it up a little sand. Reggie is feeling pretty good. In each of the last five seven-game series, the seventh game was won by the visiting team. Today, the home team is leading five to nothing. Oh. We'll have to see what happens. The ball breaks outside. The last time the home team won the seventh game was back in 1964 when St. Louis went into New York and played the Yankees. Managed in 1964 by the manager of the Mets this year, Yogi Bell. Two balls, two strikes to Garrett. Back with the fastball in, strike three. Fourth strikeout for Holtzman, who struck out Garrett, starting him out with two fastballs, and then had him looking at a curve today. In there in the sixth inning, he is looking at swinging in a fastball. So he's got him once looking at a curve and swinging in the sixth on a fastball. Felix beyond. Round of the short of the first. Jackson caught his line drive, bouncing into the wall and foul territory in the fourth. First pitch, down low, ball one. Beyond over two. Holtzman back throwing again, a strike at the knees. And in the series, Dion, who had 185 hits, a brand new match record during the regular season, has been up 30 times with five hits. Here's one out toward left center field. Dion drills it between the two. Don Leo comes over, but it's going to roll to the wall. Dion on his way down to second base and will stop there with a double. Hit number four, Bob Postman. Leon got there between that Leo in center and Rooney in left. I thought that Leo might run it down, but he got by him and rolled to the wall. And Leon steamed in the second. With Staub and Jones do up. Rusty Staub pops up on the first pitch to short center field of the first and single with two out of the fourth. Five to nothing as Staub steps in. Olsen looks back, throws the Staub. Down low, ball one. One and oh. Fastball, drill. This will be a base hit to right field. Beyond around the third base. He'll get by Jackson and roll to the wall. Stop on his way to second base. He'll go over the double. Again, it looks as though Jackson would run that one down. He'll race by him. And suddenly it is five to one. And suddenly. The open ball pen gets busy again. Rusty Todd now has 11 hits in this World Series, two in this game, and Dick Williams is walking out. And he's already calling for the right-hander, Raleigh Fingers, to come in to face Leon Jones. Raleigh Fingers making another appearance in this ballgame. He was in 62 ball games in the regular season with a record of seven wins and eight losses. He had 22 saves, and that's the hand for Ken Holtzman. 
Austin getting credit for five and one third innings of work. He has been charged with one run so far. He has given up five hits. He struck out four and walked one. Fingers has appeared in six games in this World Series. He has pitched ten and one third innings, giving up ten hits. He has allowed four runs. One earned run. He has walked four and struck out two. His one run average is 0 0.87 in World Series play. So quickly, Dick Williams making a pitching change as the Mets finally score, and with the score at 5 to 1, the Mets batting with a runner at second base and one man out. It is rumored that right after the ball game, Dick Williams will announce that he is resigning as manager of the Oakland A's. Going back to what Jim was talking about in 1964, when the Cardinals defeated the Yankees, manager for the Cardinals was Johnny Keene, and the manager for the Yankees was Yogi Bear, and they both were fired. And Dick Williams has been rumored around the ballpark here, and has been rumored that Williams will announce his resignation as manager of the A's after the ball game. What do you think, Ralph? All I heard all week long. This is World Series again. That Williams is going to quit. He is going to the Yankees. But today, for the time as we hit the seventh game, I began to hear a little, well, is he going to quit? He's got a press conference after this game is over. You know, is he going or not? Well, here's Cleon Jones at Jackson at that time, deep to the warning track in center field for his long drive, and then walked to the fourth and twisted his ankle. Last inning, takes a curve outside. When a capital single got by him and led it to an unearned run, the fifth run of the series. All one to Jones, down a second to stop, one run in, it's five to one open. Take this to all the strike on the outside corner. Well, mark it up. For the second year in a row, no complete game in a World Series game. Both starting pitchers gone today. Fingers ready. Throws a fastball. Out to right field. Jackson drifting back. Tagging his stop. Now the zone is way to third. Jackson throws. Goes to the cutoff man, Green. And with two out, a second run potentially is over at third base. Bringing up John Milner. Only once before, and this is the 70th World Series, remember, only once before have we had a World Series in which there has not been a complete game. Back in 1959, the and White Sox did not have a pitcher turn in a complete game. Last year, the seven-game series between Oakland and Cincinnati. This year, in the seven-game series between New York and Oakland, no complete games. Milner popped out to Green in the second and was thrown out on a pretty good play by Green in the fourth. Fingers ready and throws inside and low, ball one. Milner, top left-handed hitting home run hitter for the Mets in their history with 23 this year. Has none, of course, in this World Series. Down low again, and it's 2-0. Waiting on deck is Jerry Grody. Sal Bando trots over now to say something to Raleigh Fingers. Darrell Knowles is still out on that open bullpen. And George Stone... Still warming in the Mets bullpen. Fingers throw. That's a strike. Yoda started off offer, checked on it, but the ball hit the inside corner. Five to one our score in the seventh game of the series. We've got two out in the sixth. Rusty Staub over at third base. Yoda looks, waits, ground ball toward Johnson, down to one knee, stumbles a bit, gets up, steps on the back. One run on two base hits. No errors and Stop left to third. We go to the last of the second. And Oakland leads five to one. Dick Davalillo will lead off for Oakland here. He'll be in the ball game batting against the left hand pitcher. He was put in the ball game to bat against the right hand pitcher back in the third. It'll be Vic Davalillo, Darren Johnson, and Dick Green for Ray Sadecki as Ray gets set to work his second inning. Throw on down to second base, and here's Jim Simpson. Five to one on score. Ray Fossey has been warming up out in the bullpen, there. And it might be that the A's will get Fossey to aim and send tennis down to first base a little bit later on for defensive purposes. 
taking out Darren Johnson. But here's Cavalio, the fly to center in the third. Hayes out in front by five to one. Ray Zanecki, the third best pitcher, left-hander, ready to work. Garrett is in on the grass at grass at third. Cavalio takes a strike at the knee. Matlack was the starter today, worked two and two-thirds innings. Gave up four runs on four hits, two of them home runs by Campanellis and Jackson. Right out toward right field. In comes Staub, out goes the arm. Staub is there, one hand. And that will bring up Darren Johnson. Johnson just might be batting for the last card, and we might have that defensive change. He grounded the Garrett at third in the second and looked at the third call strike, a curveball in the fourth. Sadecki throws a curveball strike. If Holtzman should be the winning pitcher today, will you realize that left-handers will have won six of the seven games, Holtzman twice, Lindblad once, and the Mets, Kuzman, Matt Black, and McGraw? Each one, there's a ball, one ball, one strike. But one of the biggest wins was by the right-handers, Catfish Hunter, yesterday, 3-1. to one, That sent this to the seventh game of the World Series. One ball, one strike. Sinecki throws a fastball, catches the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. Now Paul Lindblad runs down to join the Oakland bullpen. Sunny skies in Oakland. Sun is shining on the A's right now. There's a grand foul as they're out in front by four. Five to one. Well, they just can't seem to erase the stigma of unearned runs in this World Series. We've got another one today. We've had one all along throughout the World Series. One ball, two strikes. Guy drops down for the curveball, which stays outside. Two and two. We've had some rain in Oakland at night time. We've had some rain before the games in New York, but all games have gone exactly as scheduled. All seven of them. Three and two now as the ball misses high and outside to Darren Thompson. Dick Green stands on deck. Sadecki throws and breaks a curveball over there that Johnson swings and misses. That's the fifth strikeout for the A's this afternoon. That's the first for Sadecki. And that's the second time that Johnson has struck out. Here's the green. Right-handed batter. Green is off for two. He is struck out looking and dropped. Becky's ready, throws outside. I would say the biggest turnaround of this World Series from the first game a week ago yesterday until today has been the Oakland crowd. It is a sellout. It is a noisy crowd. It was not a sellout, and it was not a noisy crowd a week ago in either game, Saturday or Sunday. This ball misses up high. Two and all now to the three. They play green slightly around the right. Sadecki drops down to throw that curveball of his and gets it over. Two balls, one strike. There are banners here in Oakland as the word Shea Stadium in New York. Another curveball, swing and a miss. It's two and two. And um, if you were with us yesterday, I pointed out that in New York, Tug McGraw, their fine reliever, says you got to believe. Out here, there's a sign out in left field. Written in the green and gold colors of open, saying, Make it happen. Sadecki ready. Throws the fastball. It's lined off to the right. Sadecki, Brown, seems to have to the breaking pitch, dropped down, and when he throws the fastball, comes over the top. Ray has pitched outstanding baseball for the Mets this year, and I believe he's faster than he has been in several years. He won 20 games going back to the St. Louis Cardinals in 64. 2 2 of the pitch, and there's a breaking pitch. Ground up to Harrelson on two big hops at shortstop. He throws on, and that's the A's sixth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. At the end of six of the seventh game of the World Series, it's 5 to 1. Oakland. We're going now to the top of the seventh inning. Oakland leading by a score of 5 to 1. The Mets coming up. 
They have nine outs to go, and once again for the play-by-play, -play, Jim Simpson. All right, Ralph, and as we suspected, Nick Williams has made that defensive change. Gene Tennis moves from behind the plate down to first base, and Ray Fossey comes into the ball game to do the catching. So that's three defensive changes that Williams has made. One dictated by getting a left-handed swinger in there, Dale. Jerry Grody, one for two today, swings and on, drop toward left field. Rudy comes on and takes it. Grody is now one for three, but he has hit the ball right on the button every time. And here is Don Horn, who singled the left on a 3 2 pitch from Ken Holtzman, the starter, and struck out swinging it on Holtzman fastball in the fifth. One for two. Stone continues to throw. Anybody gets on here, and the pitcher, Sudeke, will be batted for. It's 5-1. to one. The A's, at least their fans, are feeling that they've really got a headlong start for that second consecutive world championship. Aaron Powell's the first one. Off to the right, down the right field line, and into the seats. And by the way, for those of you who've been listening overseas and armed forces, American forces radio in Europe and in South America, FEM in Asia and in Japan, it's been nice having you with us on this World Series, the 70th in history. Strike one. The count fingers throws and another a foul ball off to the right. A little bit deeper down the right field line into the seats this time, and it's quickly two strikes. So, huh. They used to play Hahn around to the right, but after his triple in the other night in New York, in the fourth game of the series, to left center, they played him a little to the left. This pitch is down low, gets between the legs of Fossey. One ball, two strikes. When Hahn struck out in the fifth inning, he chased the fastball low and away. One ball, two strikes. Harrelson on deck. Dolly Fingers. Big right hander throws a sidearm sweeping breaking ball. It breaks low and away, and it's two and two. Fingers, when he gets that pitch over, it hits the outside corner of the plate, and he is most effective against that one missed. Two and two. Fingers working very fast. Now comes back with a fastball, and it's fall out to the right, upstairs, and dropped. Marty Springstead, the umpire, with a new supply of baseballs now. Back to us, the Oakland Coliseum. And there he is, who won it, 5 to 1. Fingers throws again, fastball. The looper out of the right field, and Jackson's going to take it on one hop. On as his second hit of this game, his sixth of the series. And that's the first of Raleigh Fingers, although Grody. Hits the ball very hard to Rudy and left. Bud Harrelson coming up. Nobody is on the... Well, Sudeke is now walking out to the on-deck circle, but you can bet if Harrelson gets on, or maybe even if he doesn't, you will have a pinch hitter. Harrelson a switch hitter, batting left-handed against Roddy Fingers. Mets trying to battle back. They're down by four. Bando creeps it on the grass at third base. Fastball strike. Harrelson didn't think so. Turns away and yells something in Marty Springstead. Well, you can do a little more drawing at the umpire in public in the seventh game of the World Series. You won't see him again until next year. They play Bud Harrelson to hit the other one. Else has no hits today, six hits and 22 attempts in the series. Ball is hit out to center field. Davalio swoops over and takes it. Battling all the way and suddenly forgot there was a man on base until Rudy yelled at him and then he whirled and threw it in. Two out. And Boswell is coming up. Ken Boswell was a pitch hitter yesterday and came through and a pinch hitter. One other time in the World Series and through, he is two for two, batting a thousand and has scored a run. With Boswell, as Ralph said, ignited that 
attempted Mets comeback in the late innings yesterday. He didn't offer the base hit, but it just fell short. And Joe Rudy was largely responsible there, making a fine play. And of course, Darrell knows for those three pitches to star, but Rusty never came close on any one of them. Striking out. Boswell comes up. He's a left-handed hitter. Ken apparently is affiliated with some few concern because he'll come out in warm-ups and wear a white shoe all through batting practice, fielding practice, and then when it comes time to play the game, he'll go back and put on the same black shoes as the rest of the New York Mets have. They play Ken around to the right. Jackson very close to the line, down the right field line. Kenneth not holding. Don Hahn on, but guarding the line and back to first base. A's are up five to one. And the A's fans are calling on fingers to get Boswell. Pitches in under the hands. to ball on. And now, a little parachute floats to earth behind home plate. Plastic parachute with an A on it. And a green baseball, or a facsimile of a baseball, the weight that pulls it down. And it is picked up by a Met ball boy and kind of rumpled up and put in the Met dugout, and he draws the move. Ball one to Boswell. Fingers closed. Little looper out of the center field. That's going to drop in there and stopping at second base is Don Hahn and Boswell. Win or lose over the winter time can say, hey, hey, look at me. I was up three times as a pinch hitter in the World Series, and I got three base hits. Now, Garrett is coming up, and Garrett is the only man with two home runs. Garrett has five hits. Two of those are home runs. He has been up 28 times. He struck out twice today. He's a left-handed batter, and quickly, Wes Stock comes running out the pitching coach to talk to Ronnie Fingers. Ray Fossey's going to join him. And Darrell Knowles continues to warm. Garrett hasn't moved out of the batting box yet. Five runs on six hits. And no errors for Oakland. One run on seven hits. And an error to cost the run for the New York Mets. Stock comes back. Hahn is at second. Marswell is at first. There are two outs. And Garrett is ready. Five to one. Mets trying to rally, trying to come back. Fingers throws outside of the high. Ball one. And now the open crowd becomes a little rested. Infield pulled well around for Garrett. Who can pull that ball? Find the open stance. Swings. Gets a good cut of the fastball from Fingers and fouls it to the screen. George Stone continues to throw. He'll be the next pitcher. He'll be the fourth pitcher for the New York Mets. Logie Barris and everybody will pitch that we need except Tom Seaver. He's through for the year. One ball, one strike. Fingers throws, breaking pitch, foul at the plate. Fingers curve ball, foul at the plate. One and two. The honors on deck. Dick Williams, arms folded, walking back and forth. One of us dug out. Now takes his stance alongside of West Stock. That's the two of you see together. Williams with his pitching coach, Stock. Just as Rube Walker always sits himself very close to Yogi Harrow. One and two. Two on the pitch. Breaking pitch. Grounded. Terrible foul ball, says. Donna Kelly at first base. And then it just went foul because it hit a couple of feet in front of the bag in fair territory, but then it turned off foul. Boswell, down on at first base with his third pinch hit, joins Gonzalo Marquez, who was with the A's last year, also had three pinch hits of the series. And such people as Carl Warwick, Dusty Rhodes, and Bobby Brown, along with the same thing. Our score is 5 to 1 in the New York 7. Oakland leads. Fingers ready. Looks back to second. Now throws a breaking pitch. It's line foul. Down into the Hutz bullpen. Aaron's off there and out towards Reggie Jackson in right field. Breaking pitch and Garrett is way out in front of it. 
Five to one, and Jackson throws another swing into the stand. Jackson has driven in two runs and thrown two balls into the stand. He's two for two. One and two. Fingers to the stretch. Throws the pitch too hard. And it's two balls, two strikes. Fossey walks out a few steps, tosses the ball back. Darrell Knowles continues to throw it out on the open bullpen. Shadows creeping over our head from the screen back out toward the home plate. Fingers throws in the side with the fastball. And he's gone three and two, and that gives the Mets something they've been looking for. Now, instead of hugging it in there with one ball, two strikes, three and two, they can be off and running and get an extra jump. Should Garrett get one on the ball? It will give them a running start with three and two and two out. Fingers ready in the stretch. Runners lead off. The runners are on the way. Fastball, straight three, four. Garrett throws his final run to Chuck. He struck out for the third time. Drew as he went to the fastball right at the knees and struck it off. No run. Drew hit. No errors. And two men left in transit between first and second and third. We go to the last of the seventh. It's five to one open. While we were away, this crowd of 50,000, a sellout crowd singing God Bless America. Ralph Geiner, along with Jim Simpson, were going now to the bottom of the seventh inning, the new pitch in the ball game for the Mets, and here's Jim. George Stone in the second game. He pitched an inning and saved the game for Matt Locke in New York. Five to one, our score, as Ralph said. Raleigh Finger steps in to do the hitting. Bengals is 0 for 1 thus far in Texas Strike. 0 for 1 in the series. This is his first time at bat in this game. Bengals are trusting to save this game, but Holtzman has six outs to go. That pitch misses one ball wide. Gold opportunity in the seventh inning for the Mets, but Garrett got caught looking at the fastball. The eighth inning, by the label is the best opportunity. The Armstrong and Jones are due up. Five out toward right field. Stop comes on fast and Jake hit it. A one hop. Fingers has a base hit. That ball wasn't drilled in right field. It's coming from a charging stop. Before the series started, Dick Williams was asked whether or not the designated hitter rule in the American League would affect his ball club because his pitchers had not been able to hit because of that rule. He said he didn't think so. He was certainly right. The pitchers have had three base hits in this World Series. Two of them in this game. On an all two count, Postman double to left, and now fingers. Texas League single to right. That'll bring up Caponeros, who's two run homer in the third. No fault in the game. Fun. No one picks it up at first. Does it throw it first? He has a plan in front of him. Just good there. Get him out of the throw it. Let the big round bomb and nothing happens. Has to go to the base hit. Fingers down the second. Half an hour. Running his way off. the third hit in this game for Campanella. And that will bring up Rudy, who is two for two, plus the walk. He has scored one. Five to one open. The A's want to break it wide open. Another box. Fouled out of third baseline. Going in deep trouble. And the Mets, a whisker away from letting this game get completely out of hand in the last of the seventh inning. And if the game gets out of hand, the World Series championship rings go the other way. Jerry Kuzman, a fine pitcher in Shea Stadium in New York, has started to warm up. Down at second base, Wally Fingers ties his shoe. Milner is in on the grass at third. Garrett is also looking for the party. Rudy is looking down to earth north. 
And the fans here in Oakland love it. Rudy steps back in. One strike to count squares around the butt again. Pops it up down behind the screen. And it's two strikes. So now Rudy will take a look again. Well, I remember when Rusty Stop was called on to bump a couple of times. Couldn't do it, so he had to swing away, and he swung away for a home run in New York. Let's see what Joe Rudy does. He walked in the first inning, singled in the third, and then the fifth. Strong steps on. Rudy steps in. The pitch. Ground ball foul. Outside the bag of third. Drifts down, slowly rolling now toward the A's bullpen. Oakland A's won the first, the Mets tied it. They won the third, the Mets tied it. Then the Mets went ahead. The A's came back and tied the series yesterday, and now they're out in front of the decisive one, five to one. Going from the sweat. 0 oh and 2, down low and inside. One ball, two strikes. Ball pops out of the glove of Brody. Walks over, picks it up, fires it back to Shaw. Wind is blowing out towards center field. Miller is still in at first base. Miller has gone back at third, figuring. Rudy to swing away, and he takes his call, strike three. Rudy turns around and looks at Springsmith, as Garrett did just moments ago, but Sean gets the strikeout. And that'll bring up Sal Bando. 0 for 3 today. 6 for 25 in the series. He said stopped at a warning track in right field the last time he was up. Fingers went off this. Seventh inning of the Texas League single to right. Campanaris bunted his way out and the Miller did not make a throw at first. The family couldn't get the ball out of his glove. Breaking pitch and say, ball one. And Rudy has just struck out with it. Neon keeps deploying behind the runner fingers at second base. Stone throws again, breaking the catch at the inside corner, and now Star or Vandal puts his hands on his hips and does something to Marty Springs said. Well, I said at the outset that what Oakland Coliseum sounds like the Roman Coliseum, and it does, or the way I imagine it did. One ball, one strike. Swing and a change and a miss. One ball, two strikes. Seventh inning, one man is out. Two men are on. And it's a 4 1 lead for Oakland. Bando, power hitter, nevertheless, chokes up just a bit on the back. Don't throw, swing and a miss. Bando is out of there. Stone got himself in some, some trouble with a couple of base hits. Here comes Reggie Jackson. In the third inning, when the A's got their four earned runs, Holtzman had a double. Campanaro hit the first pitch to the opposite field for a home run. Then Rudy single, Bando popped out, and with Jackson who drove in two runs yesterday with two out, drove in two more today with one swing of his bat. A home run into the right center field bleacher. Now Reggie is nine hits and 28 times at bat, and has six RBIs. And has made some important catches and throws. Stone, a left hander, looking in now to Reggie Jackson, the left handed hitter. Throws him a breaking pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one. Nobody now in the open bullpen, but Kuzman still getting warmed down on the Mets bullpen. Now Springfield stops, steps out. Well, a streamer, I guess, is in the way. What it is, is it's floating out. 
directly over second base, out over the center field wall, and it's distracting when a hitter looks at the pitcher. He can see past that fluttering of white. Then removed, and with one strike, Jackson is ready. Don't throws. Down low. One ball, one strike. Vegas checking around to where Mion and Harrelson are. Campanus looking over his shoulders. Sean throws. Jackson checks the swing. Two and one. Pitch was low. Brody asked for a ruling by third base on Bar Ball Fire and Bar affirms that Jackson did swing and die. Two and one. This time it's a strike. Jackson tried to check his swing. May have, but the ball says swing step is over the plate. Two strikes. Gene Tennis is on deck. They play Jackson around the right and very deep. Swing and a miss. He has struck out. Stone. In trouble with the base hits to Fingers and the Capitaris, and then struck out Rudy, Bando, and Jackson. No runs, two hits, no errors, and the same two left on base at the end of seven. Open for New York one. All the Mets are down to their last six outs in this ball game as we go to the top of the eighth inning. Oakland leading by a score of five to one. Lead off batter for the Mets in this inning will be. Felix Milan, who has doubled in three times up in this ball game, and he has scored the only Met run. Mets with a good chance as they come to the heart of their batting order. Felix Milan batting second, Rusty Stout batting third, and Creon Jones batting fourth. And now, once again, here's Jim. Marty Springstead will I'll do a little work around home plate. The catcher is ready. Young stepping out. And now steps back in. Felix Mion. He doubled between Davalio and Rudy last time up. Fingers, throws. It's a strike. The Mets had a pretty good opportunity there in the sixth inning and again in the seventh inning. They're down five to one and they're running out of chances. Fingers throws again, rolled away in the dirt. Crossy digs it out. It's one ball, one strike. The four first runs, all the earned runs by Oakland, as we told you, came on the two home runs. First by Kavanaugh, then by Jackson. Then in the fifth inning, Kavanaugh singled, and the ball got away for Jones for an hour, and Rudy immediately singled him home with his fourth out of the eye of the series. Breaking pitch, kept to the outside corner. That's what Fingers likes to do. Right hand with a sweeping motion, a right handed hitter catching that corner low away. One more strike. Rusty Staub stands on deck. Fingers ready. Throws a breaking pitch. Slow roller toward Campanaris at shortstop. Up with it quickly. Throws on there. He is. He's out by three or four seconds. As slow as that was, Campanaris on the dead run was tapping his glove before he got there, saying, I've got it. Here's Rusty Staub. Five to short center in the first, single in the fourth, and double in his sixth RBI in the sixth. Rusty Straub has been a one-man gang for the New York Mets. He has 11 hits more than anybody else. He has six RBIs. But now one is out in the eighth inning. You just wonder, as we come down to the closing moments, will we see Willie Mays as a player again? Because this is last game as a player after a remarkable career that began in 1951. When his first year started out in a World Series. And now he winds up that career in a World Series. Basketball is inside the stop. Ball one. Leon Jones dealing on back. 
They're still playing. Staub to go the other way. Since that shoulder injury has not pulled too many pitches. There's a strike on the inside part. Last ball from Fingers. On the last time up, Staub did pull a double to right field. Fingers throws a curveball that drops right over. One ball, two strikes. Big, slow curve from Raleigh Fingers. He gives you all that motion. Now the one-two pitch. Back to the fastball. Ground is toward Green at second base. On the second off, he throws over the center to the two out. And this crowd begins to feel that they are for real, that the Oakland A's are going to nail this down. Two out of the eighth inning. They're four outs away from becoming the first teams of the Yankees of the 62-63 season to win back-to-back -back world championships. Here's Leon Jones. Sent Jackson deep to center the hole in his long drive of the second, walk in the fourth, and fly to right in the sixth. Five to one, our score in the eighth. Milner on deck. Fastball catches the outside corner. Strike one from Finger. This ball game was scoreless through the first two and a half innings before the four-run third. Swinging strike on a slow single curveball. And then John Matlack with the one earned run in the previous 42 and a third innings allowed four. As for the second time of the series, he was pitching with the unaccustomed to three days rest instead of four. 0-2 oh, now, the count to Cleon Jones. Fingers ready. Throws him the fastball and misses outside. One ball, two strikes. Good at sunshine, but out the yellow center field, some very dark, rainy-looking clouds. Just look like they will go by the other way. Not stop here. One and two, throws him a breaking pitch low and away. Two balls, two strikes. trying to save this game for Holtzman and win the World Series. Fastball backs him out of there. At a count of 0 and 2, Sitz has missed twice along the way and then busted him with a fastball in line. And it's 3 and 2 with two out. Mets down by four. With lots of base runners and some timely hits. Fastball is fouled down the right field line. This will be well back in the seats. Still three and two. Well, the series started out here a week ago yesterday. We played through two games and left open even Steve at a game apiece on to New York. When we came back, it was the Mets who were leading. Swing and a miss. Got three outs to go, and the only championship will belong to Oakland. In other words, the Mets are running out of time. You go to the last of the eighth. Oakland, five, and New York, one. After 174 ball games, it's down to the, by the eighth inning. Oakland leading in the final game of this best of four out of seven by a score of five to one. In the top of the ninth inning, the Mets will have John Milner, Jerry Grody, and Don Hahn as their first three batters. The first, the bottom half of the eighth, and here's Jim Simpson. Dean Simmons, who is over two, but a very important walk. When he walked in the third inning, he tied a Babe Ruth record set in the 1926 World Series of 11 walks of the seven game series. Dennis, the hero of last year's World Series, for perhaps the last time this year. Makes it slight to the knees. Well, you begin to wonder, should this score hold up? And it's a comfortable four-run lead with one inning to go. What the announcement of Dick Williams will be? The manager of the A's. Going back down low. It is one and one. Here's a man that took the Boston Red Sox for the 1967 World Series. Much too far as of many. 
And then, of course, he had Oakland in the championships the whole last year. There's a drive. He left field. Jones back by the warning track. Now circles in and takes it. One out of the eight. And that'll bring up Davileo, who is over two. He continues the story. He had the championships, the Oakland and the championships, one year against Baltimore. Did not make it to the World Series. Came back the next year, made it to the World Series, and all the way to the World Championship, beating Cincinnati in seven games last year. And now he has won a third straight division title. And it looks like he's going to win a second straight World Series. He will have managed two different ball clubs, the three World Series, since 1967. That is some kind of management. And Leo takes a pitch up now. Ball one. It'll be Milner, Brody, and Hahn in the ninth inning for New York in their last chance. That Leo. Down ball toward me on the second base. Up to the side of it's the middle of the two up. And the open eight. And now Ray Fossey will come up for the first time. He went in as a defensive replacement. Fossey has been up 18 times, has two base hits, one of which was a double. Right handed batter. They also falls way around in the hole for Foss. He's standing back at the very edge of the outfield grass. Line drive between them. No matter how far over he was pulled, it went right between Elson and Garrett. And Fossey gets another base hit. That's the third off goal. Well, Fossey now on the series, 3 for 19. And he is Dick Green. All for three today, one for 15 in the series, but he's had some defensive gems at second base. Five runs, nine hits, no errors for open, one run, seven hits, and one error for New York. Throw on the fourth Mets pitcher, throw, swing and a miss by Green on the fastball. Some temporarily has disappeared behind the clouds, and now we see bits of paper and confetti floating down from various areas of the stands. The Oakland fans wrapped by their ballplayers a week ago, celebrating this weekend a pitch long away. Up by one strike. As a matter of fact, the A's yesterday, with a sellout crowd screaming as they are today, said in their locker room afterwards they couldn't believe it. Was that the same Oakland crowd they've known for so many years? One and one, Stone throws, swinging in a ground foul right at the plate, picked up by Brody quickly and thrown back to Stone. One ball, two strikes. Three of the four home games of this World Series. One of Mets won two out of three of their home games at Chase Stadium. One and two. Stone throws. Ground ball forward. Harrison the shortstop. Up with it. Here's on the first base. And he has got three for the third out. And Miller puts it back. And now, no hit, no errors, and one left. And Mets last half. At the end of the night, it's five to one Oakland. Of these Oakland A fans. As they feel, they're just a inning away, three outs away of winning a second consecutive world championship since the mighty Yankees did it in the early 60s. And more importantly, for the American League, it will be the first time that any league has repeated as World Series champions in the last seven years. They've been alternating. Milner, 0 for 3, leads it off against Raleigh Fingers. It's not over yet. It's 5 to 1 open. He takes the flick and sits on the inside corner, Spike Long. Brody stands on deck. There are white pellets with green letterings of Oakland all around. There are batting helmets to the Oakland A's. Green jackets, breaking pits, the curveball missed outside, one and one. And a young man below me walks by with a sign that he prepared this morning, obviously, beautifully printed, says World Series Champions 1973, the A's. Pitches up high and inside. Two balls, one strike. Fossey yells out at fingers. Get the ball over. Make them hit it. We're up by four. Fingers back, throws the fastball. Uh, Miller had a pretty good cut, but fouls it back. It's two and two. Clouds have coming up the sun, but it's... 
Bright picture here for A's fans at the moment. A pretty dark one for the Mets. 2-2. Two -two, ball is pulled. Foul down to the Mets bullpen. Pass Roy McMillan, the coach at first base. Don Horn is third up, new up in this inning. And you just wonder again out loud whether or not Woody Mays will get a chance to swing it back. Fingers throws inside with the fastball. Three and two. Well, or rather the wind is blowing straight out towards center field. And now Milner steps out. An object of some kind got loose on the field behind home plate. Three and two. Milner waits, fingers throws, again a foul. Sharply hit. That's first base, where tennis is guarding that line. Jackson comes over. Let's see if he throws this one into the stands. He runs back. He throws it into the stands, and they drop it out. So now he got to retrieve it down on the warning track and flip it up again. That's three that Reggie has thrown into the stands, and we make a point of it because technically not supposed to do that. That brings it on. They lost two strikes. Back again with the fastball. Foul upstairs behind us. Still three and two. We are in the ninth inning in Oakland, California, in the seventh game of the World Series. And the A's lead it five to one. Fingers. Throws him the fastball again. Foul. Pass. Tennis at first base. That's three straight pitches that Miller's been out in front of and has ripped past the first baseman. Jackson has another one. And Harry Wendell stepped the umpire saying a few words to him out there. Reggie's having fun now, chasing down foul balls and throwing them in the seats. He could be the series' most valuable player. Pitches inside, and look out, the Mets are alive as Mill goes the walk. That's one thing a relief pitcher is not supposed to do, and so Wes Stock comes racing out. Don't put men on base. Don Hahn comes out into the on-deck circle. Brody is waiting in the batter's box. Five to one to score. So people are beginning to move around now. Darrell Knowles is getting up. Down on the bullpen. Fossey comes back. Eddie Yost yells something across to Roy McMillan, yelling from third to first base. Infield, in at the corners, looking for the double play, and playing Brody slightly around to the right. He has one for three, he's hit the ball hard every time. It's low, ball one. Jackson made a diving catch on him in the second. He singled the left in the fifth, and he lined the Rudy and left in the second. He has been pulling the baseball, hitting it hard, but he's one for three. He has eight hits in the series. This pitch, breaking ball, catches the outside corner. In the bullpen right now, the right-hander is James Catfish Hunter, the winner of yesterday's important game that even the series of three games apiece. Hunter is up and throwing. Dick Williams making sure they nail us down here in the ninth inning. Fastball has popped up, foul behind home plate. One ball, two strikes. Miller practically standing on the bag at first base. Doesn't want to get picked off. No way is he going to be stealing. They're down by four. Brown out on deck. Fingers throws a breaking pitch, but it's thrown away. Two balls, two strikes. Bossy again walks out and now fires the ball back to him. Telling him, get the ball over the plate. Don't lose this man. Five to one. Oakland, ninth inning. Fingers looks over. Throws the ball. Punched out toward left field. On comes Rudy. And he's there. Takes the line wide. And retreating to first base is Miller. There's one out. As Rudy throws all the way to Tennis at first base. Rudy has won before the day. And he's 
Some kind of shock every time he's been up. One out in the ninth, and Hahn is up, and Harrelson comes out on deck. Sal Bando walks over to talk to Ray Fossey. And Raleigh Fingers. Fossey now tells everybody there's one out. Bando's still talking. Talking to Green. What's going to happen as he trots back? Signaling over to first where they're going to play. Now Green yells back to Bando. And now Green backs up. He was coming in close to the grass, but now backs up to normal double play depth. Fastball foul of the screen by Hahn. Hahn today is two for three. He struck out swinging at a Holtzman fastball in the fifth, but other than that, he has had base hits. Hunter and Knowles continue to throw. On close stance. Gets a sidearm turn ball strike. Bingham dropped down and then across a beautiful turn ball for strike two. And now a streamer goes into the open bullpen and wraps itself around Catfish Hunter. Darrell Knowles helps him get it off. Long streamer paper. There are streamers out in right center field. Fingers throws, fastball, it's too high. One ball, two strikes. This crowd wants it over. Go to the A's. Fastball outside. Hahn almost chased it. It's two and two. He struck out at just that same kind of outside fastball in the fifth inning. On can run pretty well. Miller fairly well. Oh, punch the right field. Base hit. Miller will stop at second base. Hahn gets his third hit of the day. And now Harrelson will come up. And someone will have to swing, lest there be a double play for the pitcher. Harrelson walks up in this 5-1 to one ball game. Two men are on. Harrelson, by no stretch of the imagination, is known as a long ball hitter. The A's fans getting a little... Rested now, out on deck. Our deck is Ed Cranepole. Yogi Berra not going with sentiment, but going with power and the left-hander against the right-hander. That could change depending on if Dick Williams makes a change. Fingers throws. Harrelson tries to bunt his way on. Over his fingers to pick it up. He throws on the first base. Got him as the runners move up. Harrelson bunting for the base hit. Was thrown out on the fine play by Fingers. And now they're on out of way. And Ed Cranepole, the last of the original men, signed out of high school in New York at the age of 17 to join that first team, will be the man coming up. One power down the left field line retrieved some streamers that were thrown from the stands there. Five to one, our score. Over third base is Milner. Down at second base is Hall. Bando and Fossey and Fingers have had something to say to each other. Now Crane Pool is coming up. And has been up twice before in this World Series, has failed to hit. The organist begins to play music. These fans sense that this might be it. It is Hunter. That is scoring most and the hardest in the bullpen. And now, Dick Davileo is picking up that streamer that's been resting out in right center field for some time. Didn't really notice it because Brody and her are up there. 
the right-handed hitters, and he was over in left center field. Now he's moved to right center and deep, and he noticed it and picked it up. Brains rule is ready. And so is Wally Finger. Fastball, two more. Ball one. The Mets looking for just one more miracle. The A's in the last two ball games have looked like the Oakland ball club everybody understood them to be. Good pitching, powerful 320 game winners. All of the A's are up on the front step. There's a strike at the knee. All of the A's, these same A's that fought each other, that fought their owners, all through the season and all through this World Series, now as one unit are standing on the top step of their dugout, ready just to break in the celebration should they win their second World Series in a row. Fingers with a one ball, one strike. Comes back, it's fouled off, and now Crane has a one-two count on him. Herb Nord gets out and waves back his left fielder while Fan breaks out onto the field in right field and shakes Reggie Jackson's hand, and then with nobody saying to do anything, comes back. That I did it, climbs back into the sand. No one is trying to get Davalio's attention. He's way over in right center field and wave him around for dead center. They don't feel train bullets going to pull the ball that much. One and two with two out. Garrett on deck. Five to one. Oakland. Two out of the ninth. Curveball. Foul. Just barely ticked. It rolls to the screen. Still one ball, two strikes. Body Springstead turns around and holds up his finger, pointing back toward the photographers and fans just off to the left of home plate. Green pool waits. Fingers has the sign. The pitch is a curveball bounded toward the first baseman tennis. He bounded the ball. Twice he bounds it. The fans came on thinking it was all over, but it is not. It is five to two runners at first and third, and we are still in the game as Garrett steps up. They'll have to clear the fans off. They're shaking and hugging each other as though it's all over. Well, while they do that and now leave the field, let's pause 30 seconds for station identification. With Ralph Connor, who is down in the Mets dressing room, this is Jim Simpson. The fans have left the field, but Dick Williams, the manager of the Oakland A's, is walking onto the field. This ball game should be over by now. But Gene Tennis, last year's World Series hero, was just playing superb defense at first base until now, allowed the ball to play him, booted it away, then dropped it again. And with the left hander Garrett coming up, Fingers is going to walk out, and Darrell Knowles runs in. Hand is for Raleigh Finger. He'll pitch three and a third inning. Has given up an unearned run. Three base hits, struck out two and walked one. For Darrell Knowles, this is his seventh World Series game. You can't play in any more than that. It is a series record. Darrell Knowles, out with a bad hand last year, unable to play, set the series record this year, and gets a chance now to shut the door on the New York Mets, who have an owner and run. It is a five to two ball game. And with runners at first and third, the only man in the world to hit two home runs is the tying run. Wayne Garrett. He will face Darrell Knowles. Garrett today has struck out three times in four appearances. Teddy Martinez has gone in to run for train pool at first base. So it is Hahn over at third, Martinez, Martinez at first. And Garrett, all for four for the day, five for 29 for the series, facing Knowles. The fastball is in the dirt. 
They play Garrett, even though he's going against the fast-balling left-hander, way around to the right, still to pull the ball. And now the fans realize, instead of this World Series being over, as it should be, but for the error, one swing in the mat could tie it up. Goes back. Throws a little looper. Campanero goes back. Says, I've got to tell you. The Oakland A's have won their second consecutive World Series championship. The first time that's been done since the Yankees of 62 and 63. And for the first time in the last seven World Series, one league has won two in a row. And that is, of course, the American League. Charles O. Finley being led off now, carrying an Oakland pennant as he heads for the dressing room. The fans are trying to get to the dressing room, and we'll be back for some dressing room talk in just a moment, but now we pause for this message. We are back. And the story of the game, not the series, the game is in the third inning of John Matlock, who in the last 42 and a third innings before this happened had allowed but one earned run. Matlock gave up a base hit on an 0-2 count of all things to the pitcher Ken Holtman, who doubled a left. Campy Campaneros hit the first pitch the other way, for a home run, the first home run of the 1973 series for the home run hitting Oakland A's. Now Strange and Wilds, it was hit by Campaneros, who only hit four during the regular season. That made it two to nothing. So Rudy came on and singled to center field, but Bando popped out to Milner at first base. Reggie Jackson hit a 1-1 pitch for the longest home run of the World Series. Way over the 375-foot mark out in right center field, and suddenly it was four to nothing. And for all intents and purposes, the ball game was over. Campaneros got another run, an unearned run in the fifth inning when he singled, went to second base on the air by Jones, was driven home by Rudy. New York came back to score a run in the sixth inning on the double by Mion, and Staub doubled him home for a sixth RBI to make it five to one. And then when Milner walked in the ninth inning, he later came the era when trains will bounce the ball for tennis, what should have been the third out of the World Series. Tennis up the ball, plays it. And the score became 5-2. Five to two. Five runs, nine hits, and one error with Holtzman, the winning pitcher. His lifetime in the World Series is now 3-1. and one. Two runs, eight hits, and one error for New York. And John Matlock, who was Mr. Everything for the New York Mets, all down the stretch through the month of September in the playoffs and in the World Series until now is the loser. And the Mets miracle? Well, they'll have to hope that they get another one next year. They had one in 1969. They won this National League Eastern Division the day after the season ended out in Chicago. Then they went out and took the highly favored Cincinnati Reds in five games that came to the day all even after fighting back going ahead then tied at three games apiece. And somehow the miracle fizzled up. And the Mets have lost and the Oakland A's have won. And we'll be back for more color in one minute. Transportation, welfare, ecology, politics, education, the economy. Headlines, newsmakers, and correspondents across the nation. Updated every hour. On the international scene, instant service from NBC Newsmen on the alert everywhere in the world. All combined in clear, accurate, up-to-the-minute reports on NBC News on the Hour. Plus, hotlines on major national or world developments, bulletins on important events just occurring, urgent reports on breaking news. The voices of newsmakers and reporters. The sounds of news in the making. NBC News gets it when it happens. You get it when it happens any moment of the day. Hear it on radio. Hear it at its very best. Hear it on NBC. In the dressing room, Tony Kubek is talking to manager Dick Williams. Let's join in. Yeah, but with Garrett... 
Uh, Relic just did a tremendous job. It's a shame to, get, to finish it. But this was a club that took all 25 men, and uh, well, we proved it again today. And we played a very fine ball club. I have all the respect, and I'm, uh, our players have all the respect in the world for uh, Yogi Berra and his great ball club. And it was a tremendous battle. And we play 101 games, and one of them win 50, and the other one win 51. Kenny Austin started the ball game for you. He gave you a good tough five days, which I think is what you expected. It was what we were hoping for, and Kenny let it all hang out. Tony, and he did it. Raleigh Sanders came right in. He came up with a big pitcher for you. He's been excellent all year. They're all old also, and uh, it's just a complete uh, uh, team effort all the way. Yeah, congratulations. I know it's a lot harder to repeat the second Thank you guys, world champions. Let's get Joe Rudy up here, Marty. All right, Tony, and uh, someone pull Reggie Jackson over here, too, uh, just a minute. Here is the finest left fielder in the game today, certainly if not the finest, one of the best. Joe Rudy has a great World Series, it seems like the World Classic brings it up. Marty, I think it was a super. Uh, Mets played a great series and uh, had fantastic pitching. And uh, I was back against the wall. We came back from New York, and I know everybody was down. We went out to yesterday and busted our ass and uh, came out okay. Joe, this uh, getting back home, this Oakland crowd today looked to be and sounded to be from the press box just as great as any crowd could ever be. It was yesterday and the day both, especially yesterday. I really got the guys that went out there and really feeling down. The crowd was really cheering for us and uh, really got the drill going. It made me feel great. Joe, you did a great job. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, Mike. Two world championships in a row. Here's uh, Daryl Knowles and Reggie Jackson. Reggie, come here just a minute. I tell you what, this film, we've talked about playing under duress. I don't think anybody knows very much about what Reggie Jackson has been playing under in the last few weeks. Reggie, I can announce to you right now about one thing that's really going to be something. You have been chosen the most valuable player of the 1973 World Series. Right. 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 Before that, Reggie, you'll receive a 1974 Dodge Dart. And I know, Dan, oh, you're going to be traveling around in pride. Now, Reggie, there's something else that nobody has known anything about except a few people and the Federal Bureau of Vets investigation. And Reggie said a long time ago, about three weeks ago, there's going to come a time when I want to tell the story. Reggie, this is it right now. Would you like to tell the story? Well, Monty, I, I was at home one afternoon, and I was tired as hell. I was trying to get some rest, and I, had a, I was talking on the phone, and I get an interruption in the, in the phone call, and, and it's Finley. And uh, he told me, he said, I want you to go to the ballpark right now. He said, Dick Williams is there, and there are two FBI agents. And I said to myself, what have I done? I haven't missed any alimony payments. I don't, I don't sell dope. I haven't honked any cops. I haven't done anything wrong. And so I, I got dressed as fast as I could, and I went up to the stadium, and Dick was there, and he was kind of looking mad, and I was a little bit afraid. We were in Mr. Finley's office. And the two FBI agents were there, and they told me that they had gotten a letter from a group called the Weathermen, so-called the Weathermen, and the letter was a, a threat on my life. It said, if Reggie Jackson plays in the playoffs, in the 1973 playoffs of the World Series, it'll be the last time he ever does anything. And we just took precautions, and the FBI people were great. I uh, had an escort in Baltimore, I had an escort to and from the ballpark. In New York, everything was great. I wasn't worried at any time. But, you know, now is the time to tell the story. But now let's talk about baseball. Absolutely, Reggie. The letter did come to us. Reggie Jackson, most valuable player award in the uh, World Series. Congratulations to you. Well, thanks a lot. I'd just like to say that um, I feel like I'm accepting the award for Vic Raleigh. Any one of four guys could have got it. Raleigh Fingers, Joe Rudy, uh, Bert Campanaris, Darrell Knowles appeared in seven straight games. And I was just enough to be in the right spot at the right time, I guess. So I'm accepting it out of one out of five. And another thing I want to say is the last two days, we played hardball, we played baseball. And the man on my left taught me how he didn't give me any tip ball. He didn't say, uh, you got to do this, you got to do that. He didn't say, you're back to the wall. It's understood 
Dick Williams taught me how to get ready for the last two baseball games. I owe him a hell of a lot for it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that he's leaving. I wish the hell he wasn't, but I understand. Reggie, thank you very much. Okay, let me talk to uh, Darrell Lowe over here. Darrell, how does it feel to be a World Series record holder being in seven games out of seven? Monty, I'll tell you this. I didn't want any part of that game today. I'm going to kill Gino when I get out of there because... <laughs> Man, make that error, you know, and, and I tell you, it's just it's great to be in a World Series. I didn't get to play last year. I never dreamed of getting seven ball games. I'm just happy to think that we won it and that I was able to pitch. Well, so, Darrell, you got one of the biggest crowds the World Series I've ever seen when you got Rusty Snow. Congratulations. I was pulling for you because you didn't get in last year. Well, thank you for watching. It's mine. It's a super thrill, please. Thank you. Darrell Lowe. Here's Raleigh Fingers, whose mustache has become one of the most famous, but his arm is the thing that has made it famous, really. Raleigh? In six more of them this year. How do you feel now? Ready for a long rest? Yes, sir. I tell you, I'm going to take a big winner off. Uh, I'm sorry, I got tired in the ninth inning here, but Dale picked me up. Were you a little unhappy to come out of there, or do you want to get that last out? I'd like to stay in and got the last out, but uh, I, I know that Dick wanted to, wanted to go out there and get him because with the left hand, especially a guy like Gary, who hit the ball in the ballpark, I really didn't have my good velocity in the last inning. And uh, I was throwing the ball where I went to, but I just didn't have a good velocity, and there's a chance he, he might have hit one out on me. So uh, I think a left hand or left hand uh, situation was good with him in there. Raleigh, nice job. Congratulations to you. Now, Bando, as captain of this team, how do you feel repeating for the first time any team's repeated in since 61? Well, Monty, and that's me, it's a great feeling. And I still don't think the people out there have really seen how good we can really play. We had a couple of adversities taking us in this series, and uh, the way we play only shows how good we can really play. Things specially done by you players the last couple of days to come back and really become the Oakland A's championship team and sort of put it together again? Well, I think at the beginning we were just happy to be here because it was two years in a row. And then when they were out there leading us, we said, Gentlemen, we cannot let them beat us. we got to go out there and show them we're the better ball club. And I think we just put it in high gear those last two games. Probably the Mets are a mighty good ball club, aren't they? They sure are. They've got excellent pitching, good defense, and uh, it's a good thing that uh, Campy and Richie got over a couple of them. Thank you, Sal, very much. Tony Kubek is over here now. He's got uh, the winning pitcher of today's ball game. He won again last year. Kenny, winning two games in a World Series has got to be one of the top thrills a pitcher can have. Yeah, it was a thrill, honey. I was uh, a little worried last night and uh, a little worried waiting until the game started. And when I, I went out there, I just tried to go as long as hard as I can. I was just tickled to death the way things came out. You tell me that uh, on day of a ball game that you're just almost, uh, well, nobody can talk with you. You get back and concentrate and really get ready for the ball game. Yeah, I started to concentrate starting the night before and uh, catch pitch, pitch such a great game uh, Saturday that I just concentrated right from the third out of the ninth about how I was going to pitch today. Kenny, uh, did you have any particular pitch working today? You started throwing a few more curveballs, it looked like early. Right, I think I just had good stuff today and uh, I was throwing pretty hard and I had fairly good control and I think I threw a couple of good curveballs and even got a couple strikeouts. Would you like to talk about your hitting? Yeah, yeah I sure would. You